Hello, chicken. We meet again. No, 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 you're not going to run away so easily. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Well, ooh, spider? What is that? Huh. Well, I am currently in a test world, and I am in spectator mode at the moment, and this is the Season 2 seed for Too Crafty. Yep, I don't have the actual map. This is just a seed that I've generated, and you can tell it's a little bit different because there are some things left to random chance, like the lava that is not here but is in the survival world and the tree placement seems to be a little bit more random a little bit different than the actual world but, uh, but yeah so I'm in spectator mode so I can go below the ground you can see that I've marked out a tower right there and then I've got this glass area right here and this glass area is at 64 and if we go below it you see another glass floor at 46 so between 64 and 46, I've marked that out. And the special thing here is that this whole area has very little water all around it. Why might that be important? Well, because we're going to be building a squid farm. And squids spawn between level 63 and 46. And, and uh, they also have a mob cap. And so if you have any water around you, then you're going to have very reduced rates. And so I wanted to find a place. Most people tend to go to deserts or mesas, but I found one here not too far from my base in a taiga. So this area, if we go to one of the edges, you can see that there is very little water. In fact, most of the water up here is not at surface level. And we can just drop down and you can see very few caves and most of them don't have a lot of water in them so it's not going to we're not going to be competing too much with those I can always come through and do standard cave lighting and just fill in the water in the survival world but I wanted to come over here and make sure that I was not doing this in vain I wanted to make sure that my my overall digging and overall placement was correct and and so I believe I have found that it is the closest thing that we're gonna have is maybe that right there and then there I was rather close on the other side over that way the direction I'm pointing but uh, but yeah I think I think this is a good spot and so what I'm gonna do is uh, we'll see I might do a little bit of a time-lapse of the digging wait a minute I don't need to dig this whole place out I've got all the resources I need back at my base why should I bother digging this out instead take a look at my inventory you see this right here? Yeah, we're gonna play around with that, shall we? You can see I've got a little system set up here and I've already done some testing, but we're just going to run this a few times and hopefully get to where we need to go. So I will time lapse this, but I'm not gonna dig it. All right, see you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and let me just show you something real quick. I ended up putting in a nether portal, and wow, that is loud. I haven't messed with the volume lately. But yeah, I put that in because I was tired of taking all those trips back and forth to my base, which happens to be... which way is it? Is it that way? Anyway, I can't remember, and that's another reason why I did that because I ended up getting lost. I think I went off that way and yeah, it was it was pretty bad. I did not get back to my base till after night had fallen and yeah, uh yeah, anyway, it it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it certainly wasn't the best. Now, let's get over to this thing. We did end up getting down to bedrock, which is way way too far down. Um, and well there's really uh, no getting around it what I need to do is at about 25 I need to set out a new platform I've put in this ladder just to give myself a little bit of workroom there we go all right is that on 25 yes Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in 
a little platform here that I can use to build or start building the rest of the farm. Oops, hit the wrong button there real quick. I am not going to keep you along for the whole building of this platform. Instead, I'm just going to take care of this off camera and then when we come back, we will get started on the splat pad and the collection area. So hold tight and I'll see you in just a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Let me just show you real quick. I've got the splat pad started and you can see the outline of the farm. This was what I was originally going to dig out, but you can see that the TNT was a little bit more destructive than I had originally anticipated. But of course, if you work with TNT, you probably already figured that was going to happen. So next up, let's see what else I did. I've outlined where the farm mechanics are going to go down here. And then what we need to do is start working on the collection area. So I'm just going to grab some hoppers and we'll get that started in just a moment. Let me explain this hole right here. And hey, hi creeper. Let's see if we can get him. Got him. Not enough. And there he's gone. All right. So this central area right here is going to be the item elevator. Okay. So we're going to send the items exactly up through the middle. And that means we need to get the items into the item elevator. We're going to do that on each corner because, as I explained earlier, we are going to be in a highly efficient area for squid spawning. So we need to split up the mechanics for moving items out of these hoppers. And rather than having one hopper and dropper combo do it. We're going to have four hopper dropper combos doing this. So there we go. And so the items are going to go along a pathway here and we'll, we'll pull them all together and then send them into one side of the item elevator. Let me just explain some of what's going on. We are going to be doing something similar to the zip crowd squid farm and i can put a link to the description or link to that in the description box below just for your reference let's see is that the center we've gone one too far take that off okay yeah so this is how we are going to do this we need to do what that's one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two. All right. And then the Zip Crowd version used hopper minecarts below the splat pad. We're not going to do that. I really don't want to get into trying to make that work especially because that design also had all of the items going out one corner I want the items going up through the center that's where I want the player access to be so we're going to change up the overall design just just slightly you know it's not it's not too much but we're going to use a bunch of hoppers because we do have a pretty good iron farm and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to get going with this. And then when we come back, we should have the hoppers all done. And I will do one of the dropper comparator clocks. And, and yeah, you can see how that goes. You've seen me do them before, but you know what? Just to, to get the point across, we'll, we'll show one of those on camera. Ooh, you need to be pointing into that one. All right, so let me get finished doing this and I will bring you back when we're ready for the next part. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if by now you have not seen me build one of these, then you have not really been paying attention to the channel. Let me just get a little of this because we're going to hide this cobblestone 
But what you see me doing here is setting up the item elevator, okay? So I'm not going to continue that part. I just wanted to show you this. And again, if you haven't seen me do one of those, well, I've done a lot of them. So it means you, you might not actually be watching the videos. But anyway, right now what we need to do is put together one of these... Uh, what are they? Comparator clock deals. And so what I'll do... Oh, I used the wrong pick. Oh, well. Okay, so let's put a dropper here. I did have to move this down by one because I want enough room up here to do the necessary work on the redstone. Okay, so we're going to do... We'll just bring some glass in here like so and then some of this and uh, that that way we we can see how it's all gonna kind of fit together all right so we need to pull a signal off of this dropper so if anything comes into it let me get the correct tool there and then we don't need those I should have cleared my inventory out, but what we need to do is we're done with the dropper. We'll pull out a comparator. And there we go. So that's going to give us a it's going to give us a signal if there are any items in that dropper. And what we want to do is bring that back around to there as necessary. Okay. So we need to extend the signal a little bit. And what we're going to do is use a repeater for that. And then, once again, we'll pull in another comparator and wrap this around like so. And I had a question from Neilium about that. Why do I use a second comparator? Of course, it'd be cheaper just to run the signal back into this comparator. But the problem is that if this dropper gets all the way full and you use the other form of that comparator clock, it is actually not going to run. So depending on how efficient this farm is, it could possibly get to that point. We don't want that. Okay, so this this arrangement right here is going to give us a signal that will always do a clock no matter how many items are in there. Okay, so uh, let's just... I wonder if we have enough. You can see that's going. Yeah, we don't have enough items to showcase that. We might have enough here. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So we'll get... That's all the way full, okay? If we were to just pull this around, and I'll have to knock this out again, this is just to show you by way of, of example how this should work. Okay, let's bring this back around. Okay, so you notice right now it is not, well no, let's do the subtraction. Okay, so it's not looping. Let's just pull a couple of items out and and there we go. So it is looping at that point. We want that to happen all the time, regardless of how many items are in there. So that's why we do this, okay? And I don't want that attaching back to that comparator. So there we go. We've got our clock, and we just need to carry this back. I don't need that many items, so it, it'll start shooting them out once, once I do that, okay? So that's working. Uh, I can just grab the items when we are actually pulling in the water. But I've got four more, no, no, three more of these to set up. And then we can get the water streams going and start sending that into our item elevator. All right. So let me get those built and the water streams done. And we'll take a look at our progress thus far. And we're back. You can see that I've reoriented the comparator clocks. I did have this one and this one pointing to a stream of water that was flowing from there this way over to here. And it just wasn't working with getting the items into 
this stream correctly. So uh, instead, they are going uh, this way. The water just flows that way. All right, so I've oriented the comparator clocks that way. And there we go. Let's give it a test real quick. We'll jump up this ladder. Okay, so we've got what four different quadrants. We'll put one here, 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 and here. And you can see them coming up right here. The item elevator will eventually extend all the way up to our AFK spot. Let's make sure. Did we get... I'm losing items somewhere. I can't figure that out. It's like they went in and then nothing. So let's just do this. So there's one. Watch it. disappeared over here. Hmm. Am I missing a block? Let's see. No. No block. Yeah, that's really strange. Unless the water is not quite correct. No, the water's correct. Yeah, it's just hanging out on that block right there. Huh. That's very strange. They don't have enough enough speed to get past that. Huh. So, any of you know what might be the cause of that? Well, that would be good to know. Let me know in the comments below. But, I mean, once this farm gets going, what does it matter if we lose a few uh, ink sacks? You know, what does it matter? All right, so... It sometimes gets past there, but yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll watch the rates and see if too many get stuck over there. Hmm. Yeah, anyway. So we're pretty much done right here. And looking at the time, um, it's, it's the end of the episode. We haven't finished this. Don't you worry. When uh, we will be back here, but I want to just point out that the next episode is episode 50. And we're going to be doing a world tour, okay, around not just my builds, but around the server, okay? So I can show off some of the great builds that the other guys and gals are doing. So stay tuned for that. And then after that, we should be back here. Well, I mean, we're all done there. We need to carry this wall all the way up, and I have to do some more collecting of resources for that. You can see the material we're using. I've got to go wool collecting, so we're going to carry that up, carry the item elevator, and then build the actual slime farm piece. So, so we've got we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but uh, yeah, we we should be good. I've got I've got a little design over in my creative test world that I'm working off of, so I think I think we'll be fine. But uh, join me next time for the world tour, and just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, I have actually started streaming on occasion, so feel free to take a look at the link in the description box below. It's beam.pro slash mcsoapthegreat. Feel free to go check that out. Hit the follow button and you will get email notifications if you want of when I start streaming. You can also see those on Twitter. And I am at MC Soap the Great. But uh, hey, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to let me know either down below or once again on Twitter. And watch for the streaming notifications. Sometimes we will do them here in Too Crafty, sometimes in Jungle Island Adventures, just taking care of various grindy things that uh, we can you know, have some audience feedback on pretty, pretty quickly. So that's the neat thing about streaming. So feel free to check that out. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.